Ladies and gentlemen, there are only really two to three ways that you can crack the subconscious mind. There are only really two, maybe three ways that are proven portals of access to the subconscious. And in this video, I'm going to share with you the most powerful way to communicate with your subconscious. So let's unpack this together and let's start right now. Hi folks, welcome back to Elevate for a new day. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're feeling blessed. And I hope that today's message encourages you and inspires you and uplifts you. If you're new here, why not consider subscribing? I'm here every day of the week, folks. and Never miss a day. I love sharing with you about the subconscious mind, about overcoming beliefs and patterns of behavior that have held you captive of where you are right now. And in overcoming them, you will be catapulted years ahead, straight down into the future and destiny that you dream of. It's right there waiting for you. There's a little bit of groundwork to make up though. So today let's talk about the subconscious mind, about what it does, about its purpose and function, and about one guaranteed way of cracking the code, of moving into the area of effective shift in the subconscious mind. You see, the subconscious holds all of our belief systems. It's like, it's like the operating system of the computer of our life. It holds all the coding, the way we see things, the way we perceive things, the way we talk, the way we interact, our attitude towards things, our disposition, whether we are by nature and intrinsically happy and positive, or have you ever met someone and they're just always negative? They're always down in the dumps, things are always going wrong. Folks, all of that lives from programming inside of the subconscious mind. It affects everything around about us. Have you ever noticed how you can walk into a room of a hundred people, a hundred strangers you've never met? And if you are predisposed to seeing the good in humanity, if you have made a choice to see the good in humanity, if your subconscious is programmed to see the good in people, that's what you will see. In that room of 100 strangers, you will find beautiful people with beautiful stories. You will see compassion and empathy and joy. You will see people who are thankful. But if your program has you predisposed to picking out fault, to seeing the bad, the evil in humanity, to seeing what's wrong with the people, what's wrong with the world, in that very same room of 100 strangers, you will find the manipulators. You will find the energy vampires, the narcissists, the abusers. So what's the change? What's the difference? How can one person see one thing and someone else see something that is the polar opposite of that in the same physical context? You see, this is the power of the coding of the subconscious mind. We don't understand the impact and implications it has in our everyday world, but this is how it works. The subconscious mind is always out and about scanning all of the information that surrounds you, making judgment calls and indexing them against its program. So the subconscious mind takes in everything that comes in through your senses. All of the things you don't even know are happening right now. When was the last time you thought about how your mouth tastes? When was the last time you thought about how the air feels on your skin? When was the last time you consciously thought about the chair you're sitting on, about the smell in the air, about the sensation of the hair on your head, or lack of it in my case. <laughs> you see, everything that comes into us that is perceived through our senses goes through a filter of the subconscious mind and has an overlay of its program put onto it. So the subconscious mind takes in all of this information that our consciousness simply can't observe. There's too much of it being fired at us all the time for our conscious mind to deal with. 
So it comes into the subconscious. And the subconscious says, oh, here's something that aligns with our program. Let's bring this up into conscious awareness. Let's put this on the radar screen of his or her mind. That's why you can walk into a room of 100 strangers and if your subconscious program believes that people are inherently bad, you should be distrusting. You will find the people who are bad and who you should be distrusting of. But if your subconscious program believes that people are intrinsically good and it celebrates what is right in humanity, you will find the beautiful souls that are still there waiting to be found. That's why when you are consciously aware of a green car, and I've used this example before, you'll see them everywhere. But unless you are consciously aware of green cars, it might be years since you've seen one. Now the green cars have always been there. The only thing that has changed is what the subconscious is allowing to come up onto the radar screen of your mind. So you see then that the thoughts we think are not necessarily our own, but they are what the subconscious deems reasonable for us to see and experience. So where does this program come from? Are we born with it? To some extent. But up until the age of seven, our brain is in a waveform cycle that is called theta neutrality. And that is where the subconscious mind is like a big sponge absorbing everything. It's a recording device. It records everything. And then from about the age of seven, we shift out of theta neutrality. And the subconscious mind shifts. It changes from a recording device into a device that simply plays back what has been recorded. So if you grew up in a home where you were told you're not enough, you're not worthy, you have to do this and earn love. Money is hard to come by. We are not lucky, we are not fortunate, we are not blessed. If you grow up in a home that is critical, where harsh words are spoken, where mum and dad yell at each other. If you grow up in that home, that's why you are likely to repeat those cycles. Because your subconscious mind has accepted that as the baseline reality of your existence. And when you grow up, it simply plays back to you everything that affirms that belief. So every piece of stimulation that affirms the belief of your subconscious program is what you will see. Even though there is so much more out there, even the things that are at the polar opposite of what your subconscious will allow you to believe. So how do we make the change? Are we stuck with this program forever? Is this just our lot in life? Thanks, mum and dad. Not at all. There are ways that we can measure the subconscious thought pattern and cycle and through advances in modern technology and science. I love brain science. I love studying this at university while I was studying for my degree. We can measure thoughts. We can measure feelings. We can measure emotions. And we can measure the subconscious behavior. And what we know is that we can communicate with our subconscious or it learns new programs in predominantly three separate ways. The first way, we want nothing to do with, but sometimes it's part of life. The second way is what I want to share with you today. It is the quickest and the easiest way to access your subconscious. The third way is something we talk about on this channel often too. So let's dive in. The first way that the subconscious becomes reprogrammed is through trauma, dramatic trauma. Something that you go through that really makes you assess the reality that you find yourself in. The subconscious is open to reprogramming through that trauma. No one really wants to go through that. The second way is through uh, like neuro-linguistic programming, subliminals, uh, sleep affirmations, sleep meditations. You see, when we are going into sleep and coming out of sleep, for a moment our brain goes through theta neutrality waveform again. So the subconscious has two windows. 
where we can access it, going into sleep and then coming out of sleep again. This is why subliminals are so powerful if you know how to use them. But what I want to share with you today is the most effective way that any single person can change their subconscious. Now, it does not happen overnight. But it is guaranteed to shift and to change the results that you are getting. Would you like to know what it is? It's one thing. It's repetition. Don't click away yet. Let me unpack this for you. It's not going to take long. You see, repetition reinforces learning. We know that's true. But did you know back at school, when a teacher would give a student lines, did you ever have that in your school? Maybe you'd get detention and you'd have to write a hundred lines of, I will not disrupt the class, or I will get my assignment done on time, or I will do my homework, whatever it might be. That is actually rooted in the scientific understanding that that behavior, that disruptive behavior, is a subconscious behavioral pattern that can be shifted and changed through accessing the subconscious and giving it a new understanding, giving it a new baseline reality. And we do that through repetition. So then the lines aren't just detention. They become an affirmation of saying, I won't distract my class. I will get my homework done. I will get my assignment submitted on time. I won't be distracted. It becomes an affirmation. It's not just a punishment. It's presented as a punishment while we are in school. But what is happening is we are reaffirming a new subconscious program. We are installing it through the only way you can access that computer coding, and that's through repetition. Repetition reinforces learning. So if there is something in your life where you're not getting a result, you're not seeing what you want to see, you don't feel the power, that relationship, it's just not happening. You just can't seem to get ahead financially. The promotion just never comes your way. You haven't won the lottery and you believe you will. There is some underlying programming that is keeping that at bay. You can begin to shift that without even knowing what it is. So often we talk about uncovering subconscious limiting beliefs so that we can change them. Did you know you don't actually have to uncover them? You don't have to know what the beliefs are that are holding you back. All you have to know is what the beliefs are that will move you forward. You see, this is a revelation, folks. So I hope you get this. You don't have to uncover all of the things that have held you back in life. You don't have to go deep inside looking for the reasons that you are in these perpetuating cycles. Now, yes, there is power in doing that. There is power in reflecting. But you don't need to figure that out. All you need to figure out is how you're going to move forward. What will serve you moving forward? So figure out what will serve you moving forward. And then find affirmations. Write some affirmations. This is why the 55 by 5 law of attraction method is so powerful. Because you come up with an affirmation that serves the purpose you want to move towards. I'm so thankful and grateful that I'm a first division lottery winner. I'm so thankful that I'm in the relationship of my dreams and it's so uplifting. I'm so grateful that my career is steaming ahead and I'm really making progress. Whatever it is, you take that affirmation and you write it down 55 times a day for five days in a row, just like doing lines at school. Repetition reinforces learning. It will seep from your conscious awareness back down and be impressed upon your subconscious where finally that new file can be executed. The new program can be run. It's ready to go. You can go and use that to move you forward into your destiny. Folks, this is the most powerful way of accessing the subconscious. Don't worry about going back and finding all of those limiting beliefs. Don't dig up the past. Don't dredge up all of the hurt. Just figure out what's going to move me forward. What will move me into my destiny? What are the thoughts? What are the beliefs? What are the feelings? What are the emotions that I need to invest? And start practicing them. Practice gratitude. Practice thankfulness. Practice empathy. Practice love. Over and over and over again. 
until it becomes the baseline reality of the program in your subconscious and then all of a sudden you will wake up in a world where it happens organically. The subconscious takes over. You've made the shift, you've made the change. And that, my friends, is where you will see your dreams come to pass. Now, if this has blessed you, give it a thumbs up so that I know. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to have a chat with you, but folks, there's a lot of moving pieces. There's a lot of moving pieces to making a dream come true. If you really want to know how to move forward, why don't you go and check out either of these two videos. They will help you with your next steps. I love you so much. Come back tomorrow. Peace.